Hey guys, um, welcome to another episode of Jack's Literary Corner. I'm Jackie, and this is part two to my TBR for the summer. Um, like I said, I don't know if I'll get to all these books, but these are books that I'm hoping to get to in the next three months. But who knows? Now, I've already talked about, if you watch part one, I've already talked about the books that um, that probably won't take me as long to read, and I'll have better luck in getting through those books in June. And then I also have books that, um, I need to get back into that I prom like, I need to get to get to soon. Oh, actually, one of the other books I did not have here that I probably need to get to is The Kitchen God's Wife, because that, like the John Adams biography that I mentioned in that video, the Kitchen God's Wife is another one that was loaned to me by my sister, so I feel like I need to get to that one as well. Luckily, for, luckily I was able to give her back Joylock Club, and I was I had read that one. Um, so now I'm going to give you the books that it's a 50-50 chance that I'll get through them, and then there's also the books that are much bigger, including my Stephen King books that I want to read. That will take me longer, and it will take me the whole summer if I get to those books. Um, so first, um, I want to talk to you guys about Rose Blood. This is a Phantom of the Opera retelling. Um, this came out a couple years ago. Um, to the point where I actually remember when it came, I remember people talking about this book nonstop and everything. Um. Again, this is another one that nonstop is another one of those things that I won't be able to say without without associating that with something else. That's actually the name of one of my favorite songs in Hamilton. So now when I say that, that's the first Hamilton will be the first thing that comes in my mind. Um So, like I said, this is supposed to be a Phantom a modern Phantom of the Opera retelling. Um about a girl that has a beautiful gift for a beautiful singing voice, but I get I think there are like consequences to that. And like by the cover, what's on the cover, I'm guessing she scar when she sings it scars her. I don't know. That's what that's what I'm thinking. And she's kind of the phantom in the sense that she has the scars. Um and I I am in love with this cover. I love the thorns and everything that kind of they're connected to her hair. And she's really beautiful. The, you know, I don't know who the model is, but she's definitely really beautiful. Um, and I love the red roses and everything. It's such a beautiful cover. Um, and I think from what I read in the back when I first got this book is that she meets a gentleman who is the descendant of the Phantom because um, she ends up she ends up getting sent to the school in Paris that offers school. Um, and she, like I said, she meets this gentleman who I think is supposedly, I think from the description, is the descendant of the Phantom. The original Phantom. So, um, I'm excited to read this. I know there have been, there are some booktubers that I really love that have said they were disappointed, but you know what? Unless I'm just not interested in the book, I'm gonna, I, if it's a booktuber that I like that talks about this, then yes, I'll get it. So, um, so I don't entirely go along with the hype, but it's more like if a booktuber that I really like is into the book, then, then yeah, I will get it. I will check it out if it sounds like something I would be interested in. Next is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. So, I've been, one, uh, this book is in my mind, has been in my mind for years now. I saw the miniseries a couple years ago, and I love the miniseries. In fact, I prefer this over Pride and Prejudice, which they compare this to Pride and Prejudice. Um, it's a similar story to that, you know, um, like the romance is very similar. It's just set in the Industrial Revolution, during the Industrial Revolution in England. It's this young woman and her, and her because this young woman, um, this tells the story of Margaret Hale, whose father was a priest in the little country town where, um, but he has a question of moral consciousness, 
and decides to pick up the family. He quits the priesthood and decides to pick up his family and go to the um, to the town of where is it? Um, to the industrial town of um, Milton, and she forms this and to keep herself busy and to be able to handle this. Um, she decides to get involved in all the, the things that are going on in this town, like, um, I am so bad at giving you summaries. Um, all the, like, the horrible things that happen to people in this town, in the town, because they are always, all these people are working in factories and the poor conditions. She takes an interest in all, what, all that stuff, including one particular family. Um, she becomes really close friends with. But then at the same time, she catches the eye of one of the, one of the factory owners, Mr. John Thornton, who is, despite the fact that they butt heads all the time, he still is intrigued by her and starts to fall in love with her. But she, at first, does not like him at all. She can't stand him. So like I said, it's very much like, the romance is very much like Pride and Prejudice. But I think, and from the miniseries, because I haven't read the book, I prefer that that story over Pride and Prejudice. I know that's blasphemous and everything, and I still enjoy Pride and Prejudice, but I do prefer this one over Pride and Prejudice, obviously. Now I, I wonder, now I have to read the book first, then. So, I definitely want to read that one. And then, this next one here is... Okay, so this is a book that I recently bought um, because Jen from Insert Literary Pun did a review of this book because it was the Lar one of the Larry Prize nominees for 2000, I don't know if it was 2017 or 2016. I think, I, it might have been, I think it was 2017. Although it might have been on the long list for this year. I, I don't remember. But she did a review on this. Actually, I think it was this year. Um, and talked about talked about this book and everything. Because she does a series of videos where she reads and reviews the books on the long list and the short list from the Women's Prize. So I, and she said it was really good. She really loved this book. So I'm going to, so I decided to buy this and read this for myself. I'm actually kind of trying to get more into literary books. So next I have here is City of Dark Magic. I got this years and years ago, and I just never got around to reading it, and I want to read it because this might be a book that, yes, I enjoy it, but once I'm done with it, I might donate it. So I want to read it so I can determine if it's gonna if it's a book that I would fall in love with or if it's a book that I love, but I can donate it to the used bookstore. Um... Although I'm hoping it's not like a, um, like I hope I don't find out that it's actually a series. Um, I might have to look that up on Goodreads. I'm gonna be so annoyed though if it is, because sometimes I will get the first book in the series, and you know if it's a series that an old series or it's not a super popular series, then I have to buy the next book, and you know I sometimes move on from it after I've read it one the first book and. So, um, next thing from Conan O'Brien blurbed it. And unless there's another Conan O'Brien, I think this is the same guy who, um, oh wait, Conan O'Brien. Okay, so maybe, maybe it's not the same guy, because it's O'Brien. So, I don't know, I, have to, I, would, I would have to look it up. Conan, is it Conan Bryan or Conan O'Brien? I don't know, I have to look it up, but, um... But I mean, it'd be funny if it was the guy, the talk show host, that did a blurb. But the only thing I know about this, or I remember, and I don't want to take the time to read the description, is that it takes place in Prague. It's a fantasy. Um, and um, there's so um, so yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read the summary because then that will waste time. So, but. If it's fantasy, you know I'm gonna. If it's a fantasy book, and it is, then I'm definitely gonna want to check it out. Um, so I'm hoping I'll like that one. <laughs> Next, 
I capture the castle. I saw this at the bookstore. I saw this at the used bookstore and I decided to buy it. Um, I've heard a lot of people love this book. It's considered a classic, a modern classic. Um, I've read a little bit of it. Um, it's funny that there's actually um, a little sticky note in here that says, Thank you, Joan. Great book. So, and I just decided never to take it out because I feel like it's really special about that. Um, I don't really, I still haven't, I haven't read enough to give an actual, to give a good summary, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but it's one of those stories about people's lives and everything, and this family living in this castle and everything. And, um, and it's a very popular book, popular, one of the more popular classics. So Next is... Um, I, I just spent back in April, I finally read Gathering of Shadows, and I bought this one back in the beginning of April because my parents took a trip with some friends, and I ended up, with the, staying, I and my dogs ended up staying at my grandmother's house in South Carolina, um, and so we went to, because I still had, I had my gift cards with me, so we went to, um, she took me to Barnes & Noble, and I bought this one along with Home, which is Julie Andrews' memoir. Yes, the Julie Andrews. Um, so I bought this one. It's the paperback hadn't come out at the time, so um, so I got the hardback. I kind of like I said, I'm kind of having a soft. I kind of really like having paper hardbacks as well as paper. So, this is the third book in the Shades of Magic trilogy. Um, so, I can't really say much about what it's about, but, um, because it's a, it's a trilogy, but it's like, there's four Londons, there's Black London, there's White London. Uh, Black London, no one speaks about. White London is being killed by magic. Ren London has, magic is in good control and everything, and thrives in London. And then they, we have Grey London, which is our world. And our center, central character is Kel, who is, he, he is one of the few magic, ma the only magic user, one of the couple, one of the few magic users left. And he can go between all these worlds, and he's kind of the, you know, he kind of is part of the royal family of Red London. Um, and he even sees the prince as like a brother. And he delivers his messages between each of the Londons to each of the people who run the different Londons. And during one of his trips, he discovers this black stone from Black London, and he realizes that um, he needs to get Black London, the stone, back to Black London before it consumes him or hurts anybody else. And then along the way, he runs into this pirate, this female pirate, Delilah Bard, who's an adventurer. She's a bit arrogant. And she offers to help him, even though she can't, because she's not a magic user and she's from Grey London. She's not supposed to be able to cross through the different Londons, but she's stubborn and persistent and offers to help him. And also, she kind of is drawn to the magic and wants to use it and is intrigued by it. And surprisingly, she's able to come with him and nothing happens to her. So, that's what the first book is about. And then the second one, you know, we get back with these characters... And there's a magic tournament involved. Um, and then the third one, and the, the second one ended on a cliffhanger. So I don't know what the third, what happens going to happen in the third one. But um, I am very anxious and excited to read it. But at the same time, I don't want to end it. I don't want to rush it. That's why I think with series, I don't always get to the next book right away. Which I see there's another magic series, fantasy series I need to check out, but I've decided to draw the line and wait a little while. Maybe towards the end of summer, maybe in September, I'll read it. Um, that's Frozen Tides, Fallen King the fourth book in the Fallen Kingdom series. Um, so there's that one, and then next, I just bought this one, from also from the used bookstore. This is about... Thomas Jefferson's daughter, and when Thomas Jefferson was in the White House. This is from her perspective. Um, now, 
all of her book all of I think I think that's the one. Yeah. It might have been her or April from getting Hugo with it. Said they read this and they were a little disappointed. Oh like I said I always try and if it's something that I'm interested in I will still you know, I will check it out. I try not to let them influence me, but it does I share what their their thoughts were because they kind of influence they have been influencing my reading since I haven't become since I started watching booktube and then I became a member. So they do kind of influence it. Um Yeah, so I definitely want to read this. And I also want to read my, I think it's called My Dear Miss Hamilton, which is about Eliza Hamilton. Um, and I've especially been interested in that because I'm like, I love the music from the musical. I downloaded the soundtrack on my iPod. Um, but I have not seen the musical yet. But I'm definitely now more interested in Hamilton and everything. And I jumped on the bandwagon. So, but I want to read this about Thomas Jefferson's because I've always I've always loved this time period. I've always been interested in the American Revolution. So I'm trying to read more books about that. And books about the Civil War would be interesting too. Which I have a couple right here. Um so in here that one and one of those is Killer Angels. The Killer Angels. About the Civil War. Um you have all these different perspectives about that one and I think you have most of the perspective of this are from the south I think I think it yeah I think it's from mostly from the from the south from the south um let's see um well for, I mean I'm like and also I'm like the also from the perspective of the Northerners. So, but so far it sounds like most of the people are the su the South side. Um, so, you know, which this is going to be tricky because normally I'm not into these kind of books, but I've been wanting to check it out. Because like I said, I'm getting more intrigued by, you know, this, the Civil War and the American Revolution, like the 17 and the 1800s. And I kind of liked Red Badge of Courage. I thought that was kind of interesting. Definitely gonna check this out, and I'm also watching the show Turn Washington Spies, so which is about the American Revolution, and it's kind of a similar thing. So I'm giving these books a chance. Um, if not, I can always re-donate it back to 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 the bookstore. Um, the next book is a book totally different subject matter, and that is the Flight of Jim Hardy which is a retelling of Jane Eyre set in the 1950s. Um, and I like all oh, Jane Eyre is one of my favorite classics. I'm always looking forward to reading um, reading retellings of Jane Eyre. And I know there's another one out there that takes place in either China or Japan or or the Jane Eyre character is Chinese or Japanese. Um, a book all of talked about the book and did a review on the book. So, but, um, I don't know if I'll ever get around to that one. From the critiques that she gave it, I don't know if it will, it will if it, it might have, um, it kind of changed my mind recently on if I was going to read that retelling. And I know people say, oh, before you decide, even, you know, before you decide on the book, you should read it for yourself but you know life is too short and there are a lot of books out there that I want to read so I'm not going to waste my time in every book that has to do with a topic that I'm interested in but because someone else said it wasn't you know I'm not you know it wasn't good then I'm you know I'm not going to take the time to read it just to check it out for myself I mean there are some books that I think I maybe could possibly be worth it but there are a lot of books I want to read so I'm not going to push myself just because, you know, I shouldn't, I have so many books here, these are all my books fell, I have like some stacked in piles and they fell, alright, next, the next two I have here are, 
I've been wanting to read this author for a while. I got this book at BJ's when we were visiting my sister in Virginia. Um, it was one of these things where, you know, my dad doesn't like being cooped up in the house all the time. And, I'm not, and you know, of course, you know, sometimes when we're visiting him, that's what we do because my sister and brother-in-law work. And a lot of times we're there to babysit her little boys. So, um, my dad sometimes gets a little restless. So, I went with him to BJ's. And I saw this book there. Um, this is one of those, I, it's a TV series. It's, this is the TV tie-in cover. And a lot of people talk about this book and particularly talk about Neil Gaiman. He's a really popular author, author in the fantasy genre. And I've been wanting to read his work. So, I decided, I saw this book there. And I decided to get it. And I did read a little bit. I got as far as the main character of Shadow escaping and he runs into the this mysterious man that wins the Mr. Wednesday. Um, what's really cool is this is actually the tenth anniversary edition. So I don't know what makes this one special, except for maybe actually I think it's special because it has stuff in there that Neil Gaiman had to take out. Of one of the editions. But yeah, I've been wanting to read his books. And then this next one I have here is a, um, it's a classic, a modern classic, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. I don't know much about it, but a lot of booktubers like Words of a Reader have talked about how great this book is. Um, Oh, it's a coming-of-age story about this um, young woman, Francie. Oh, another book with a character named Francis. Um, oh, and she's in Williamsburg. Oh, so I wonder if they mean Williamsburg, Virginia, or is there a Williamsburg in New York? I don't know. But that'd be cool. Which would be good, because... Um, if it's in Williamsburg, Virginia, unless there's a Williamsburg in New York, um, there's actually, because I'm hope I'm, I want to be, I want to have, I want to write books, and one of the, my story ideas that I have, I'm going to set it in Williamsburg in the 1920s, so, that might be good, so it might be helpful. Okay, so those are, oh wait, I'm not done yet. <laughs> okay, so this might get into three parts, um, but in my defense, the other, the other piles were smaller. Okay, so, and, um, okay. This is the rest of the books that I potentially might take you on. I mean, this isn't all my whole other pile, there's another pile over there, but, um, this is another historical fiction set during the Civil War, or after the Civil War, actually. It's about this man, this, he was a general in the war, General Hood, and I think it's based on a true story. Um, and he is this gentleman who wants to find a wife, but he has a pretty rocky past. He's done, during the war, he did a lot of bad things, and he's trying to find a woman that will accept him, and accept him and still be, still want to be his wife. So, that's what I got from the description of that. Um, I think my best friend, one of my best friends, Larissa has this particular book, but I don't know if she ever read it. But I saw it at the bookstore, and I was very intrigued and wanted to get it. Um, and I actually have the author, the author's other book, Widow of the South, which is the same time period, um, but it's about this woman whose husband died during the war. It's about how she deals with it, I guess. Um, but I'll get to that one another time. Maybe... In the fall. Um, next I have here. This is a reread. The Secret Keeper. Um, I love Kate Moore. She's one of my favorite historical authors. I mean, she's one of those autobi authors. I will always get her books. Um, and she actually has another one coming out. Coming out soon, I believe. I don't know if it's already out or if it's coming out. But um, this is all her books are kind of like mysteries, and they go back and forth between the past and the present. Um, and what happens in the past always influences the present. And this one is, this young girl witnesses her mother, as a teenager, her mother murdered someone, and it was during the 70s, 
and it's about her trying to figure out what happened and what led to her mother to killing this guy. And we go back into her mother's past when she was a young woman in her relationship with this other woman and there was a bit, if I remember correctly, there was like a love triangle where the two women were in love with the same guy. Um, and it's set during the London Blitz. So, yep. So I don't remember, no, that's all I remember. Next, this is a book, another book that I just bought recently. And at first I was a little reluctant because it was just like um, Rick Wright Orden, James Patterson now, well, he did it first, I think. He has his own publishing company where he publishes a lot of books now um, under his name. And, I mean, not books that he writes, but like what Rick Warren is doing currently. Um, so I was a little reluctant because I've lost interest in James Patterson. I heard that he doesn't even write his own books anymore. He's a ghostwriter. And that kind of, that kind of annoys me because it's like, writing a book is very difficult and very challenging in my experience and I haven't even started on the actual writing process myself but so I feel like it's a little like you know what the heck you're not gonna even put in the effort anymore because all you care about is making money now I know it's a business first but it's still kind of kind of irks me um, but this is Stalking Jack the Ripper it's a part of a series the first book in a series I think it's kind of more of a companion series um, like, you have the one main character who's going on these, all these adventures. Um, and I heard this is really good. Um, I mean, not everybody loves it. Um, and people have, of course, mixed feelings about the main character, but it's like she's a bit of a, you know, a woman in the 1800s, but she's not the typical woman of the 1800s, and she's investigating, she's a bit of a, a scientist and an investigator, and she becomes obsessed with Jack the Ripper and this is set during the time of his reign and that's all I really know. Um, my problem is I can never avoid not knowing about this, these things. And then she has um, Hunting for Dracula is the next book and then um, Escaping Houdini will be the third book. I think that one's already out. Okay so next is Heart of Betrayal, the second book in the, um, the Remnant Chronicles. And I keep calling it Beauty of the Darkness, Beauty of Darkness, but Beauty of the Darkness of Darkness is the last book. So um, Heart of Betrayal is the second one. Um, so this is basically, the series is about this young woman, um, this young princess who is, she's the first daughter and she must marry the prince of the other kingdom but she decides she wants more than just marriage to a strain an arranged marriage she wants real love and stuff so she and her hand handmaid run away um on her wedding day and get jobs in the the town where her handmaiden grew up and then become waitresses at a tavern but what she doesn't know is this affects thing you know affects more than she realizes and the prince that she's supposed to marry and an assassin are sent after her but she doesn't know and when they get to they haven't to get to the town to the town where she's hiding you don't know which one is, she doesn't know and the on and the reader doesn't know which one is which which i think is really cool i like that concept in the first book so the second book i'm told is more the first book is more domestic life and um the second book is more political drama and the third book, I don't remember, but it was Martin Napier who kind of explained what he, each of these books was about. But, um, they're central themes anyway. So I want to read this one. And then the last one I have here is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. This is the seventh book. I probably don't really need to go over what this one is about. Um, but the series, but this is the last book in the series. I've already, I read the sixth book. Um, I don't know if it was in the end of 2017 or maybe in the beginning, like back in January. I don't remember. But I waited long enough and I need to get back into my reading and finish reading book seven. So. Okay, so before this video is so long, I'm going to stop here. 
I guess I'm gonna have to make a part three for this video. Um, I hope you guys, um, if you guys, okay, scratch that. You, um, give it, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you haven't already and have watched the video and liked it. Um, to all of you already subscribed to me, I really appreciate that and I hope you are enjoying what you're reading. Um, and if you have books that you want to, particular books you want to read this month, feel free to share in the comments. And love you guys and bye!